Hey there, what is up, plant community? Green Thumb here. A bit of a dreary day, but it's been a minute since I've done a care video on plants. And so I'm deciding to do another one. And today's topic is the Drysena Florida Beauty. Now, also, before I get started, I want to say sorry about the background noise. That's the AC running can't really do much about that so I'm gonna be talking a little louder and if the fan goes off then I'll lower my voice but Drysena Florida Beauty how to care for it so we'll go into summer care so summer care with the Drysena Florida Beauty um, if you're indoors you want to keep the soil moist, but let it dry out in between waterings, I find, with this guy. Um, so, that usually works out for me. For you, it might be a little bit different. You might want to go halfway to uh, letting it dry. But, um, the dry scene of Florida Beauty also does not like direct sunlight, even in the window. Um, it will fry, it will burn, and it will scorch. So definitely keep that in mind when uh, having this guy. They, uh, indoors, they prefer medium to bright light, so up against the window, but not receiving direct sunlight. So if you have a window that receives direct sunlight all the time, um, I definitely wouldn't have it up against the window. I'd probably bring it back a bit, to be honest. So that way it, um, did get fried. Um, so, fertilizing, you can use a slow-release fertilizer, um, or you can use liquid. Um, before I had slow-release, I was using liquid fertilizer on the thing, and uh, it seemed to work out very well. Now, when you take it outside, it ain't never going to, uh, it's never going to do well for putting it in uh, direct sunlight. So just keep that in mind. Even outside, it will fry. Um, which is why, interestingly enough, it has this little speckled pattern. Because uh, that is a natural patterning or variegation. And that variegation is uh, a kind of camouflage, if you will, to uh, help it look like that the plant has uh, sunbeams on it, so it looks like it's camouflaged up against other foliage, so animals that would want to eat on this can't really find it. Now, I'm sure there are animals out there that have caught on to this and uh, in their native habitat and do munch on it, which makes sense because it does come back easily um, if you do damage it. Now, Let's talk about how to make it bushy. Now, if you want it bushy like this or bushier, one thing you can do, which is something I accidentally did trying to get to my other plants watering um, other plants around. So this was originally one whole stem that was coming straight up. And there was a little bud there, one leaf right here. And uh, I accidentally pitched that bud and since I pinched that bud, we can see we got branching there, branching there, branching there. So that's important to know if you want it to branch out more and get more bushy. Um, now, propagating the plant is fairly simple. Um, in fact, when you get these guys, that's all they mainly are is propagations. So uh, definitely keep that in mind. So propagating, you can take... A stem cutting right here and uh, what you do or even on a branch and what you do is once you take that stem cutting you can put in water let the roots grow that way or you could take the stem cutting and you could stick it in uh, water and uh, I said water I meant soil my bad you can stick it in soil I was looking at my uh, poinsettia propagation. That's why I said water. My bad, guys. But anyways, you could stick it in soil and keep that soil moist and it will root that way. Um, it seems like that's the most common way to propagate this guy. Um, another way to propagate it is by division. 
you can divide this uh, Dreisina because even though you get them as starts of cuttings, these stronger stems here, they clump. So keep that in mind, you know, they clump. Um, so before you know it, you already have a bigger, bushier plant that um, that will definitely clump. Um, how tall do they get? I don't know, but as with all plants, it usually depends on how tall you're going to allow it to get. So, I mean, I'm sure if you keep upgrading the pots and all that, it's eventually just going to keep getting taller and taller and wider and wider. And uh, if you don't want that, again, you can pinch it back or you can make cuttings out of it and... Uh, you can keep it down to a certain size. But, um, yeah, real simple, easy plant to care for. Um, they seem to benefit from humidity, but I don't think you really have to add the humidity if you don't want to. You can just probably go by, mist it once a day, and it'd be fine. But maybe once a week. But it seems to be doing good out here and, uh, We've been struggling with humidity out here lately. Not right now. It's actually very humid out here, but indoors sometimes during the winter time. Go, B. Shoot, man. No, go. Sorry about that, guys. Honeybee. Um, they wanted to kill my shirt and think that the flowers were real and uh, sting me. Anyways. No. Um, yeah, anyways. So, yeah, a simple plant to care for. Something that, um, if you have a darker indoor setting, say the walls are gray or something, it would definitely brighten up an area. Um, again, long as you keep that plant close or by a window, it seems to really benefit a lot. Or if you even have grow lights, that will help too. Just keep in mind, though, if you do have it to where it's in a lower light condition or it's not really getting morning light from a window or it's not really right up against a window that doesn't receive direct sunlight that the variegation will become less and less and before you know it, you'll have more green than variegation but um yeah, I mean, it's an easy plant to grow, simple plant to grow. I really like it. Kind of reminds me of a croton. If you can't grow a croton and you're good with any of the Dreisina species, you should be good with this guy. It should be simple and easy to care for. Um, just again, don't put in direct sunlight and uh, it should thrive for you. And I've had this guy... Man, I've, I've had this guy for a while now, really. So, yeah. Beautiful plants, easy plants to care for, easy plants to grow. They're, uh, they're definitely amazing and a beautiful plant. Um, people consider it more of the underrated plant, but, I mean, I like them, and that's why there's all of a sudden different variants of the guys. I liked them before they were popular. So, yeah, I've had this guy for years. And uh, he's really taken off. And um, pests. Let's talk about pests. So pests you got to watch out for. Spider mice, mealybugs, thrips, scale, things like that. Just a common house plants. And you can use your pesticides to your likings to uh, take care of it. Um, sometimes if the spray on pesticides won't work, you can uh, use granules which looks like a little sand. You just sprinkle it in there, water it in, and the whole plant becomes toxic. Don't recommend it if you have curious mouths or dogs or just kids in general who might have a curious mouth and go, oh, well, that's a delicious-looking leaf. But, um, yeah. So that, that's just a common uh, pest to look for, honestly. I haven't had to deal with pests on this. It doesn't seem to attract pests, but for you, that might be a different story. Um, another way to help them grow faster is by taking them outside and uh, beefing them up for winter, and I do that with all my plants. So, yeah, that's something to take into consideration, is that you can beef them up and help them out during the uh, winter time by taking them outside, and of course, 
put them in a nice shady location. And not only that, they should grow faster for you. Again, you don't want them to grow fast, keep them indoors. But just note too, loud motorcycle. But just note too that the stems indoors will become weaker if you don't have them exposed to wind. So they'll become more droopy and weak and things like that. So keep that in mind as well. So I take mine outside. Um, you can come back this by just shaking the plant around a little bit here and there or just messing with the foliage kind of going up and doing this just kind of messing with the foliage um also if you have fans say in your room or even in a greenhouse setting if you have the sky in there and it's just blowing the foliage around that'll help too so um temperatures to keep them at i'd say definitely keep them about 60 into the 70 degree range indoors during the winter time. Um, you can up that, but just remember if you up the temps, it's going to start to grow. Um, I don't really want my plants growing in the winter time. I kind of want them to take a break for a bit because then before you know it, I have to add more fertilizer and then that's more money. And then if you live in a northern region like I do in Indiana, it's hard to get your hands on fertilizer during the winter time. So I like to not really have my plants growing. But yeah, uh, tips you want to keep them at 60. They don't like frost. They won't take frost. They'll just completely die. They are a tropical. Um, indoors, I definitely, like I said, I'd keep them. At a certain temp, if you have them outside, you definitely wouldn't want them to see too cold. Um, yeah, before I even brought this guy out, I made sure it was nice and warm. But tomorrow, it'll probably see uh, temps down to 59, which isn't too bad for Drysenas. But usually, you don't want them to take too cold. But yeah, otherwise than that, guys... That is my care tip on the Drysena Florida Beauty. Um, have a questions? I'll be happy to uh, answer them. Um, again, though, if you have questions about fertilizer, I'm just going to say use what you can. Because, I mean, that's what I do. I don't really have any specifics for fertilizers unless it comes down to palm trees. Otherwise than that, you know, I don't really have specifics. I just kind of use one type of fertilizer for everything. Sometimes I have to lessen it if you're dealing with ferns. But yeah, otherwise than that, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Have a good rest of the day and definitely keep it real and keep it tropical.